that the outside circle is seven, the inside circle is six, and the bigger one is five. That's five, six, seven. This is an unbelievable job I've never seen. Why? Because it comes from this form. This form was never here before. This form was only was found in the January of 2000. I discovered it. I didn't make this. I mean, I made it, but I didn't have anything to do with the design. It's there. All I did was study for 13 years. So, here it is here on top of the two cupolas. Here's the bottom cupola. Okay, there it is. And here's the top cupola. And there's the five. Now, these stars right here, these little stars, I put wires through here to keep my eyes from getting hurt. And if you run it right through here, like that, it hits exactly that circle with its star. Well, that's unheard of. That means that in the building, when light shines through at that particular area, okay, that star will appear on the stage. So, uh, again, here's a, this picture again. So then what I did was I found out that if I take the form and I spin it, it turns into a bell. Okay, so this is the water process. It turns into a bell. Now, I made bells, okay, that would go along with the first Gerthiana. And I put them in here like this. And these bells are suspended on columns that are just like the Steiner's. They increase their size by one-seventh, just like his. And each bell, okay, now was, in his building, a capital. And I found out that the capitals really, when spinning, turn into bells. So those are all different tones. And the archive, which is above in his building, are the tones that the bells make. Now, that is live. Okay, you can hear, okay, you can hear what's going on between the transformation of one bell into the next. All of these are indications of what he is in his building. And here's one of the bells. This is the first bell I made, which is the Saturn bell which he has the Saturn capital. This is what inspired me. And I made the last bell, it looks like this. This is, this is the heart bell. And all of these bells would be in the building, okay, except the other five, I need somebody else to make. Okay, so another thing I did with the building was I designed it so that the stained glass is on the outside of the building, not on inside on the windows that light up the inside of the building, this glass lights the outside of the building. So the building doesn't have a color of its own. It gets its color from the wind, not from the wind, but from the seasons. It gets its, uh, how high and how low the sun is. It gets it some time of day and the kind of weather. So the building will constantly change on its outside. Uh, it's a 13-sided form. Decatria. So it's a decatria. Uh, the deca is 10 and the tree is 3. I put that on the outside. So the outside will now have uh, strings that come down and around the tetrahedron as a form of protection. And these are nylon that can be played with a bow. So this will be the largest musical instrument in the world. And a tone will go all through this building. And there are also uh, another picture. And here it is complete. Here it is over here. This is the building. And um, the chestahedron is here. The two cupolas are inside. This cupola, where it comes together with the one below it, and where this one joins with this, there's a light space. So the light and this will go right from the stained glass windows will go right through that slit and make a ring of gold, a ring of beautiful colors on the season and the time of day. Uh, this is an art gallery. And underneath the basement is a place for all of the arts, painting, pottery, sculpture, music, acting, drama, on and on and on, all based on the unseen. We will be researching what cannot be seen. So here's an example of the bells. And this is the building itself, a model of the building. This is what it looks like. All of these things here. On this side, are, you can play this as a music instrument. Uh, and all underneath here are all uh, studios. And in here are performances. 
galleries, places for drama, for eurythmy, for lectures, and so forth. And this form, okay, is standing up. That's not laying down like the first Corinthian. And this form is the basis of the human heart. I have given lectures at the, uh, in San Francisco to doctors, and you can go to Heartistic Science. I have a certain website for that. Heartistic Science, one word, dot org, and you'll see my lectures on the human heart that proves that it is the geometry behind the human heart. It shows all kinds of things on how congestive heart failure can be prevented, what it looks like on the congestive heart failure, what the form does, what's inside, and I also found the fifth chamber. And the fifth chamber is right in the middle, okay, of the right ventricle. And this fifth chamber, when that happens in our heart, when that is able to develop, will change everything when the human being is able to establish that. But it's there, we know it, and the geometry doesn't lie. You can't cheat, you just can't cheat the stuff. This, you can't cheat, there is no, there's no way. We have two lines and they cross, you can't move that over here or here or here, only where it crosses. That's known as law or lawful or what is known as truth. Okay, so. This building doesn't have any property, okay? And it doesn't have any materialistic materials to build it. It doesn't have a place. All it has is this room. And in this room, this will be worked on. The unseen part of the world that can't be photographed. But it's there. We now have a way of seeing the unseen and bring it into this side, okay? So that's known as a non-physical, and some people call that spiritual. People are afraid of that word, but it's really spiritual it just means breath. That's the Latin for breath, breathing. So I designed a capstone to go on this building because the capstone is what they put on pyramids. This is the new pyramid. The pyramid now has opened up and it's expanding on the top. So here we are. We're going this way. This is grounded. On this side is the new building. This one. It is on the same level, which is the water level, on this side. Not up here, not up here, but here. It's already grounded. Now it has to come up. So it would make sense that this wouldn't have a foundation stone. It would have a capstone because we're not here yet. So I designed a capstone. This is the capstone. This is the chaptahedron with the decatr with the um, the original form opening up, and inside, right in the inside, there is a green stone. And that's supported exactly where that six-pointed star is, which is exactly the midpoint where the fifth chamber is. It's also exactly the middle of the form. And that green in there that you see is glass. And that glass is from the first Corinthian. That is a piece of glass that Rudolf Steiner had people work on to put all the different things that he did in his windows. It's now in the center of the chestahedron. And remember, this is, this isn't anything that you know it is. It is actually a form. And this form, okay, incarnates into the world as our human heart. And it does that because it goes into the cube and then it vortexes. That's exactly what it does, it vortexes. So this is the geometry based on the human heart that we all carry, both the left and the right ventricle, both. And I've given this lecture to the doctors and I have 50 current research papers that I've been able to explain what they were asking by this form. And you can go to that website and see all of that. Even the, I've got all of the research papers. You can look on the internet. Okay, so everything needs a double, a balance. Okay, so in a way this needs to be balanced somehow because it's this way. So what I did was I put a mirror in the bottom and now you see the very same form and it's reversal. 
This is called mirroring. And you can come up and look at this, of course. And that green glass, you'll see, okay, from the original birth of the and it's suspended in the middle where the human heart has a fifth chamber. So, you can look at it, you can, you can lift it up this way, but don't lift it up this way because I've made this in such a way that it's not fit with lead to hold the glass. I tried to make it as fine as I can. This will go on top of the building. This thing uh, in, in the right light is the glass is really a red of a very unusual red. You can see what I liked about it was that I got a glass that doesn't allow you to focus exactly perfectly, okay, and it could change colors in between. So as it spins, it will create a whole different effect, and you can go right outside that door, and you can look at the top of our building, and you'll see a Chester heater lit up. <coughs> Lit up. Right now it's lit up. When you go out, you'll see it. And Dean made it. Okay, so this is the capsule. I'll put it here. Thank you. Okay, I, I have 10 minutes before the next lecture. So uh, if you want to ask me any questions, whatever. Uh, I've already been offered two properties. Where? But there's, there's, no, there's no way. <laughs> I was once way out in the desert. I even <laughs> drove out there. Oh my God, no. Where it belongs is in the middle of Silicon Valley. Yes. This is where it belongs. And I'll tell you why, because this is all about expanding and Silicon Valley is all about contracting. Everything's getting smaller and faster and hotter. Here it was getting larger and cooler and slower. And that's what the heart has to do. All this contraction is hurting our heart. And oh, we got Google, and we got uh, uh, what, uh, Oracle, and you know, Facebook, and all around us, okay? All this contraction, contraction, contraction. It's going to get worse. This is the first ever of the development of an expansion that's lawful, that can take place here. The best place in the world is here. Why? Okay, listen. Why do I say that? Well, you know why I say it. But <laughs> what's amazing is this is where we are. Thank you, Richard. You put us in a place that's perfect for our work. <laughs> we can expand this contractiousness that's going on around us. And there are uh, a lot of things going on around the world that want this kind of change. We need this kind of change. We really need it. We've got to stop this contracting. It's really hurting us. So what do I feel about this building? I want to build one in here. That's a model, a big model. Okay, that can be transported around to raise money to show people what this would be like. And these buildings, okay, these buildings could be not just in Silicon Valley. These, these buildings could be in the Philippines. I know the Philippines would grab onto this. They are so excited about this. It, so it can be on, on a lot of places. But it should be here. One in Hawaii. And Hawaii. Absolutely one in Hawaii. You've got to have one. Absolutely. All the trade winds and the aloha, the all kingdom that open of heartness of the Hawaiian people. Okay? That's what this is all about, opening the heart. This is, this, where the deep, I take this all the way out to deep space. This is all about turning the earth into a planet of love. Based on the human heart. Okay, I guess I could turn this over to Dean because there's no questions, but uh, uh, I do want to thank you very much for being here. This is a significant event that's going on around the world and in different societies, 
But this is for everyone. This is for everyone. This is no racial thing here. There's no political thing here. Uh, there's no uh, society thing here. There's no cult here. Uh, there's no um, uh, uh, anything that separates people is not what this is about. This is about bringing people together in a collaborative, bringing people in to work together and that love their work. So what goes on in this building is the love of work because the love comes from the will. And what if we use our hands, okay, the heart forces don't grow. We use our brain, mm -hmm, but not like our will. And if we give our will away to the computer all the time, okay, then it becomes less, our will. Everything you see, everything I've done in 13 years, I never one second used a computer. Not once. The only reason I use a computer is for the presentations, to check my email, and look stuff up. That's it. Never. And I got these guys go, oh, listen, uh, I got a program that does these uh, wire nets, and you can put all these frames together, and I, you can turn them and, and look at this side and look at that side. And I said, you know what? Says, I can do that in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> the guy just turns red, he gets mad. He can't. He needs to put something into a program and have the program do it. Mm -mm. Sorry. That's not the work of expansion. That's the work of contraction. Giving away to some machine. We have too many machines going on around here. Everything's based on them. This is not about machines. <laughs> okay, Dean, it's your turn. Research. Okay. research coordinator. He brings in all the research, okay, goes through him, okay, and then we talk about it, whatever. But he is the one who puts it together. Thanks, Frank. Uh, well, I wanted to start with this, since uh, Frank probably didn't think... Like two days ago. <laughs> I figured this out a couple days ago, and um, I was thinking about the inside of the building and around the building, and what, how can we decorate it? How can we uh, bring this lawfulness to um, to the to the building, and how we um, uh, how we present it? Um, and so I almost, I guess, I could call this like a sort of a a lawful motif generator, <laughs> basically. <laughs> So in a sense, you could say that's a motif, right? If you were to put that there, you wouldn't really see that, and it'd be just a black piece of paper. But suddenly, you know, the chestahedron is there as a motif. And what's interesting about the chestahedron is that as long as you stay true to this vertical line and true to your angles, you, you have uh, just a infinity chestahedrons. They just keep keeping their shape. And already, right, let's say we stopped right there. I could take a picture of that. There's a motif. Could go for around a, a light switch or a sconce or something. Bring it further. And you even come out the other side. And you still have this little chestahedron, for example. And then you have these pylons, which then relate to Frank Chester's lecture about the pylons and the Egyptian pyramids, the pylon arises. But basically what I'm just showing is that you know, this is just part of, of this, the lawfulness that we can play with here at the Research Institute so we can find ways to, there's a little alien head. <laughs> Sorry. But you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's amazing. And you could just, you could just, so much possibility you know, all these points are met. What do you think? Very cool. Anyway, so that's our motif generator. And then we've been working on the, uh, the meditation chamber. This one's hollowed out. So we're, I'm in the process of mitering these connections. And then we're gonna be putting some special material in here that'll help to accumulate uh, this, um, this energy, this lawfulness. And I just wanted to say a couple of things about the glass. So the glass that's in there, 